My name is Zahra. Today, I am with Dr. Chi. I actually met her during the International Women Leadership Conference here in Dubai. She's an optometrist and she'll be giving us some insights about our eyes and how to take care of them. Hey, Zahra, how are you? I'm good, and you? Very well, I'm loving meeting you. Me too. <laughs> So tell me, you want me to start talking about the eyes and how it works? Well, I'm actually going to be asking you some questions. Great. But the first question is, how do the eyes work? The eye is made up of different components. And part of those components are the cornea, the aqueous humor, the vitreous, the lens, the retina, and the optic nerve, which connects to the brain. Now, if you look around us, there is light everywhere. If you switch off any of these lights, everywhere goes dark and you can't see. If you switch on light, imagine the lens, for instance, in your eye. The light comes through onto what is called the first stage, the cornea. This cornea gives 6 to 7% of your vision, which means if anything happens to your cornea, it's all gone. And there's actually a disease that um, where your cornea, I, I, I forgo I've forgotten the name, but it's a disease where the cornea's function decreases. Yes. You've got a few cornea diseases. You've got things like keratoconus, yes. you, which cataract. is where cataract is affected on the lens itself. Oh. So on the front part of your eye is your cornea. So you can have diseases like keratoconus, you can have ulcers of the cornea, and you can have even things that where too much water is in the cornea and you can't see again. Now, you move into the aqueous humor, which is the fluid in your eye, in the front part of your eye. How high or how low that fluid is will affect how good the pressure of the eyes is. Yeah. So you have heard of things like glaucoma. Glaucoma is, the, um, glaucoma is a disease in which the eyeball pressure increases too much. That's a simple definition for glaucoma. But for me, glaucoma is a group of eye disease which damages the optic nerve. The optic nerve connects to the brain. Yeah. And the optic nerve is the nerve center of your eye. Now, if the pressure is too high, you can have ocular hypertension, which is what you think is glaucoma, but ocular hypertension is a type among the group. Then you have the vitreous, which is the gel within the eye. This gel helps shape that shape you have in the eye. If you look at the picture of any eye at all, you have a shape, and it's that gel that helps hold it together. After that, you have the choroid, where you have the vessels in your eye, and then you move to the retina. In the center of the retina, I call it the photographic plate, is the macula. And within the macula, if there's a disease in the macula where you have any damage, you can't read, you can't write, you can't see colors, yeah. everything is difficult. But there's a very interesting disease that most people suffer, and they don't even give you signs when it comes. It's called retinal detachment. So if the retina gets detached, end of day for the camera, you can't see any images. Now, the interesting thing about the retina is that Remember we started with the light shining and the light is traveling. When the light like um when the light bounces off an object then it reflects back into your eye. We Good. learned that in science class. And then also important you have refraction. Yeah. Where there's a bending of the light. There's a bend in the path of light and it's part of the formation of a rainbow. Like first the light um the light goes into the raindrop and refracts. Correct. Can excessive computer usage affect the eye? The reason why I'm asking this is because during COVID-19, as we all know, we had to um, engage in our, in our, with our classes, but we had to do it online. And my homework was online, tasks was online, class was online, and I would sit at my computer for hours in a day. And that was slowly affecting my eyesight because then I started to realize that um, like my vision was getting blurry, so I asked my mom to take me to the optometrist, and he prescribed glasses for me to use when I'm using the computer or reading. So can you please tell us a little bit more about this? Yes. Um, excessive use. I'm going to pick on that excessive because of what you've told me. 
during COVID-19, everybody, including myself, also got that problem. And when you're on the computer a lot, a lot of things do happen. When you switch on your computer, the blue light also comes yeah. on. And this blue light can make your eyes tired. So that's the first rule, tiredness. Eventually, you could get headaches and eye strain. Even worse, you get dry eyes. It's fatigue. Fatigue. And the dry eye is more because when you're concentrating without blinking, your eyes dry out. And you need tears in the eye to lubricate the cornea. Remember I said the cornea contributes 67% of your vision. So when you don't have enough tear surface, blinking, poor, and you're staring, and you've got to do your homework, because you've got to submit your homework, yeah. then the headache sets in because you're having eye strain, you have fatigue. And yes, it does affect. Yes, it does. Thank you very much. And yeah, I've also experienced this, that when I use the computer for too long, then I start to get a headache. But um, what foods do you recommend to increase our eye health? Okay. Before I answer that one, I'll give you a tip that can help you with your computer. Please. Now, there's an exercise I tell my patients who use computer. I tell them to think, blink. Think, blink. You can't see yourself thinking, but you are. So, so quick. And when you do that, you tap into your rich tears resource, which will now lubricate your eyes naturally. Then you do the 20, 20, 20 rule. I've heard of that. It's Every 20 minutes. 20 minutes, rest for 20, 20 seconds. seconds. And look 20 mm -hmm. feet away. You can make it a song. Yeah. Every 20 Second. minutes. 20 minutes. Rest for 20 seconds and look 20 yeah. feet right. away. And then there are other exercises that can help. Eyes are muscles in the eyes. And there are exercises that you can do to help you. And of course, wear, have a screen on your computer. The blue screen just to protect you. There's a lot more, and some of them are in my book. And then I'll answer your question on foods. Regarding foods, every part of the eye is important. You need to feed that area well. So there are vitamins like vitamin A, That's vitamins, yes. And examples of vitamin A, a like you know, is beta carotene, your green leafy vegetables, your blueberries, cranberries. your cranberries, your colored fruits are good. Then you have things like vitamin C, your oranges, your grapes, vitamin E, which is your oils, your olive oils. And then you have your lutein and zeaxanthin you get from your green leafy vegetables. Then you have things like fish. Salmon, particularly? Yeah, girlfriend, you're saying it right. And then you have things like nuts. You have lots of almonds. You have... Um, but unfortunately, I'm you allergic. You are not <laughs> allergic to nuts. But even if you are, there are other things that you can use to substitute those ones. So there are lots of vegetables, lots of fruits, lots of, you know, all sorts and of course, it's important to have your exercise. Yes. And keep away from too much sun. Because when you expose yourself to the UV, it causes big damage to your eyes. Yeah, there are lots. Thank you very much for these tips. Now, on to the next question. Can you please give us some tips on how to protect our eyes? Okay. Number one. So I give away the UV. I'm going to use... Um, UAE, Dubai, as the first thing that hit me when I came here was it's a very sunny. And especially in the summer. Yes. Particularly August, it's very hot and you need to use sunglasses to protect your eyes from the UV rays of the sun. Yes. So, you know, you're an intelligent girl. Thank you very much. So, UV, you got the UVA, UVB, and these are not good for your eyes. When this hits your eyes, you could have 
cataract, which is one of those leading causes of blindness. So to shield yourself from UV, sunglasses, you know. And sunglasses that will shield you from the UVA, UVB. Have a face hat as well, the face cap to shield you because as you're protecting your eyes, you're also protecting your skin. So it's not just the inside eye, the outside as well. And whenever you eat your green vegetables, it contains pigments which also protect your macula. Remember I said about the retina? Yeah. And the center of it is the macula. So you protect that as well. So you're, you're eating the right thing, you're wearing the hat, you're wearing the sunglasses, you're doing your exercises and eating the right food, and of course exercises for your eyes. Sometimes you have to do gentle massage for your eyes. Mm. Because when you're doing that, you're stimulating oils in your eye. And moisture. And moisturizing your eyes. And oftentimes I would give you eye drops to keep the moisture high as well, or use things like warm compresses, depending on what I'm looking at. So you've been constantly mentioning eye exercises. Could you tell us some eye exercises? Just like we have exercises for our body, it seems we also have exercises for our eye. So I'd love if you could tell us more about that. Good. The very simple one is zooming. Zooming is where you step outside and you look far and you look near, far, near. Okay? okay. Then the eye yoga. I love that one. The eye yoga is so interesting because you can roll your eye round and come close and roll your eye. You, you can try it. So you have to roll that eye All the way up and run. That's it. And then down. Yes. And then the other very interesting one is you staying in a lighted room and looking out in the very dark. Or stepping outside when it's very dark and looking into a lit up room. So it's best done at night, that one. So it's almost like adapting your eye to different illumination. I had the experience. I used to wear a very strong prescription. And when I tried the exercise, my prescription reduced. Maybe some people say, it's not been tested. So I use myself as a guinea pig instead. Yeah, there are lots in my book. <laughs> I must send you my book, you know that? Yes. I will, I will send you my book. I'd like to know the diseases that affect the eyes, especially children's eyes. Okay, thank you. Very intelligent question. Now, the eye diseases that come to mind, I'll start with glaucoma. This time for children, you have big eye, bufthamos, and bufthamos would increase your pressure. The eye look big. And if not looked after, it will lead to blindness. Then you have cataract in children as well. And this time, cataract is tricky because if you're not a practitioner, you might get it wrong. Now, the children's cataract, sometimes you have other diseases that look like they mimic cataract. Then, of course, you have the glasses bit we talked about earlier on, where you have the, the short-sighted, the long-sighted. Then you have things like squint or you have amblyopia where you have lazy eye and in lazy eye you have you said nothing is wrong with your eye but it can't see yeah because one eye has one optic nerve so the optic nerve of one eye may not be um, transmitting to yes. the brain so that means one eye vision is decreased yes there's a, it could be a natural block or it could be a disease block or maybe the vessels were not well developed at birth. There are different reasons why you have um, amblyopia. There are other, lots of other children's diseases, but those are specifics. And then you can have a child born with keratoconus, or you can have a child who has um, very high long-sightedness, remember, hypermetropia, and when they are born, they have cross eyes. So your cross eye could be inwards cross eye or outward cross eye. There are lots, but those are basic ones that we see in practice all the time. Now on to the last question, which is really useful for school um, students like me. How does, um, how does good eye health affect learning in school? 
Thank you for that very, very intelligent question. Imagine if you're in class and the board is out there, whether yeah. interactive mm. board or blackboard or whiteboard, and you're sitting right there and staring, and you cannot see. Imagine the teacher looks at you and said, what's wrong with you, Zara? Why are you not writing down? He said, miss, I can't see. Yeah. And if that happens to you, and you come from somewhere, a family that, for any reason, they can't hear your voice, they don't understand why you're not doing well in school because you're not seeing. It's not necessarily because you don't understand. So that's why vision is important. And for me, I prefer everybody to come and see an optometrist as little as you can be. Regular checks. Regular checks. Because when you come and see the optometrist, the optometrist will say, oh, because you can't see because you're either short-sighted, long-sighted, or astigmatic. And sometimes it could be because you have what they call convergence problem, which means your eye cannot work together to converge. So in any of those cases, or you could have amblyopia, where you have a lazy eye, or you could have esotropia or exotropia, which means your eyes are not they are squinting. They are looking in different ways. You can't do anything with this unless you see an optometrist. And when you see me as an optometrist, I'll give you glasses and aha, you can see whether you're sitting in front or at the back. And if you have convergence problem or we have to do exercises to help you see better, then you can learn. Because when you see, then you learn. Yeah, and also 80% of what we do in school is presented is in a visual format. So if um, we're not able to see clearly, because I used to sit at the back, yes. but now I sit at the front. I used to sit at the back, and I wasn't wearing glasses, so I would, I would squint my eyes. Yes. But now, as I move to the front, and I'm already wearing glasses, yes. I'm now able to see the um, the... the um, the activities clearer. So the um, what I'm trying to say is that the wait, Dad, can you pause for a bit? Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that if we don't take care of our eyes properly, we might be missing out on vital education, which we need. So it's really important to make sure that your eyes are in a good condition and regularly visit your optometrist. Thank you. And I'll add to that. Also, speak to daddy and mommy if you're getting eye strains, if you're having headaches, if your eyes are itching, or if you find it difficult to read and write. Or even still, I should add this. If you notice that you're having headaches that keeps coming on and off, it could be something dangerous, like a tumor, but we don't know. So you need to speak to daddy all the time or mom to help you take you to an optometrist. And don't forget, not just carrots, your vegetables are good for your eyes too. So if you can eat your vegetables and also protect your eyes, do your eye exercises, you'd be amazed how good you can see. And that's why my book says, eat well, see well. Thank you very much for this interview. We've, um, me and the viewers have been learning a lot. And I'm sure the cameraman, my dad, has been learning a lot too. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you very much for joining us here. I really appreciate this. It was nice meeting you. My pleasure. If you would like to know more about Dr. Chi and what she does, her details are in the description below. Bye.